This is Steel FM Online Radio Station Chicago Dimensión Latina FM Radio TV Baja nuestra aplicación a través de tu iPhone o Android. Búscanos como Dime la FM. Búscanos en TuneIn Radio como Dimensión Latina FM y visita nuestra página web dimelafm.com. This is Elsa, and I am doing a program called Wings of Love today, and I am hoping that we can get through because this is the second try, okay? So take two for Wings of Love today. We are broadcasting live through Facebook, Facebook Live, and of course, I have a very um, good program today because we are talking about a little girl that just passed away on Christmas Day. Her name is Analia Garcia Pinto, and we have her parents today here, and we're talking about the subject of having a child that's ill with cancer and having to release her because she's now passed away. We have mom, Griselda Pinto, and we have Eloy Garcia, dad. Thank you so much for being with us, and I thank you so much for your patience. Uh, we're doing a second attempt here at doing the program. Thank you so much for being here today. It looks like the video is freezing a little bit, but let's see. Okay. Sorry, guys. I was trying to introduce both of you. Uh, Griselda Pinto and Aloy Garcia. The video froze on us, but we're back. Um, please tell us a little bit about this journey of having your daughter um, so sick and going through all this uh, period of time in, in, in her illness. It looks like the video is freezing up on us again. Uh, give us a second here and see if we can get through this. There we go. It froze. <coughs> so again, I, I was just introducing you and I was asking to see if you guys can tell us, you know, the, Analia's story. Tell us how it's been for you as parents, what you've had to endure and the difficulties involved with this uh, condition. Um. Well, it took four years of our lives, that's for sure. Um, it wasn't easy. We always had to make different plans around Analia and her conditions. And, but she was always strong through it. She never really complained at all. As a little kid, you would think she would complain, like, why me, why this? Like, at first, she didn't understand why she had to lose her hair in the beginning. She would cry about it. Some kids were cruel. 
that's a thing that parents should teach their kids not to be mean. Yes, a very good point. Was she still going to school? Like, um, unfortunately, no. She, no. She was just barely gonna go back this year. Um, okay. But she didn't make it. Yeah, she was gonna go back on November first. But then that's when then we, we went to the out, hospital yeah. and found out what's going on, and unfortunately, we had only a time limit, time limit left. Right. Uh, how do you get your child through school when they're so ill? I, I just. I guess exactly. I, even for me, you know, just as a person trying to wrap my head around it, how is it that you could even try to have any form mm -hmm. of educating your child? We didn't force it. She was very smart. She was a very smart girl for sure. Even though she didn't go to school, she knew how to write her name. She knew her ABCs. Um, she knew her numbers. She still learned. Again, it looks like the video is freezing on us. Uh, we're di we are trying to see if we could get the interview done, um, but the video keeps freezing on us. Thank you for your patience as we uh, try to get through these technical difficulties. <clears throat> so yeah, though, Thank you. you know, but uh, yes. like we were saying and everything, she, uh, she uh she still learned everything she knew uh her name she knew uh abc spelling she even helped uh, my youngest son uh leo you know as well too she helped uh julius helped her my, my other son helped her with a lot of things and everything but yes she was smart for her age even if she didn't go to school for a long period of time she was on a type of she did do a online, online learning, online learning for yeah. like a couple months but okay sometimes after her clinic visit she'll be too tired i wouldn't enforce it because it wasn't a priority on our list at the moment our first priority was her health, her health more foremost yes. than anything right and like I had said earlier, this is like as real as real gets uh, when you have to modify your life every single day. Definitely. My schedule yes. was around her schedule. My work schedule was around her doctor's appointments. There would be days where I would have to work overnights and I would come straight home from work, get the kids ready, take her to clinic, be in clinic all day till four or five o'clock in the afternoon come home sometimes i didn't want to cook dinner and go to sleep for a little bit and go right back to work but we tried our best i would do if i had to do it all over again i wouldn't want her to be i mean it's almost like a part of both of you i i almost have to say it's like you had to turn into super parents like like heroes to just to make this happen am i right yeah. i mean yeah. it the cancer part. doesn't stop for anybody that's for sure. And cancer just is so ravaging to the family and everything that you guys have to do. What were you going to say, Eloy? Because I, I, I know you were kind of paused. Oh, you know, I, I know and you, you were kind of left hanging. In, yeah, in no, the, it's fine. I was actually going to say, you know, when she actually doesn't, when she was tired, because she does the cooking at the, at the house. I can't, I can't cook, you know, what I'm saying a, a rice bowl for to save my life, you know? Yeah. But I get the pizzas and everything. I let her rest. It's obviously a long day and sometimes she stays at the hospital for two days and it's tiring on them because honestly mom and uh Nalia sometimes don't even want to be at the hospital and stuff but i'd be here with the kids making sure they're finding everything as well too you know so that's the right. whole switching the schedule and then her being on the Nalia schedule and then me making sure everybody's okay and stuff like that but i guess parents and everything we have to be understanding not being stressful and stuff like that that's why we talked about giving our kids time and, and things like that right and and prior to getting um you know to losing our connection um and, and online we were uh talking a little bit about how difficult it is when we're looking at the mental health aspect of it for the entire family for you guys as parents for the, for her siblings It looks like the video is freezing on us again. I'm going to try to see what we can gather. <laughs> the video just keeps freezing. Sorry. Yeah, that's all good. We, we're thinking it's our Wi-Fi connection or our network connection. 
well, I, I hope that we can uh, get this valuable interview because I think that a lot of families um, are living similar situations. And it looks like the video has frozen again. Uh, we are really trying hard to see what we can uh, gather today as best as we can, given the circumstances. Let's see if we could get the video to work. <laughs> so what were you guys going to say? I, it's really hard with the connection right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, basically, kind of with the conversation and everything, to sum it all up. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying as parents, it's difficult going through a, having a child with cancer and then as well having other kids. Just be understanding. You know what I'm saying? Don't stress out. Uh, make sure that they make sure that besides everybody else, make sure that you're okay as well too. Think about your personal health as well too. Because I mean, our daughter was our main priority. Mom was taking care of her, like say, like how she says. I was worrying about the other kids as well too, making everything was fine. But like how we were talking, everything. Don't be scared to reach out for help. Don't be scared to to ask for advice or anything like that trust me you know what i'm saying uh, through this whole process regardless of how we went through you'll probably find some better people out there that'll they'll connect with you and your family you know what i'm saying like how nalia she connected with a lot of people at the kaisic center everybody loved her and everything <clears throat> every time she came around i remember she used to wear red lipsticks you know what i'm saying and uh it was it was it was um it was a it was amazing to have to have a daughter like that it is. It is. It, it tr truly a uh, remarkable little girl. I, I just everything that I've seen so far, just a remarkable little girl. And um, I, I just felt like, you know, she even made her own little legacy on her own. Definitely. She did. Everybody loved her at the hospital when we were inpatient. All the nurses like loved her. They would play with her. They would give her her favorite snacks. They already knew how she was. Um, She's very outspoken. I always taught her, you know, speak your mind, tell them what you do and don't like. I know. Go right. ahead. Go ahead. It looks like the connection again is freezing on us. Um, we don't have a cooperative uh, Wi-Fi system today. Uh, we're really trying to get this to go through. Okay. <laughs> it's just freezing. <laughs> what can you say to sum it up, uh, Grisel? I'm really trying to do this, but it's really hard, you know, because we uh, unfortunately the connection isn't helping us mm -hmm. what can you say to sum it up to help other families going through these um, situations i'll say take time for yourself as well take care of you because if you're not taking care of yourself how can you take care of your other child your sick child at that um it's definitely gonna challenge you there's days that we thought we wouldn't make it through it. Uh, take as much as support and help that you could get because it's definitely not easy to go through it, especially in the end, just to lose your daughter to this. And right. We'll always be proud of her and how, how much she went through because she didn't deserve that, but she fought through it since day one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think what's really hard is, is that a lot of times we all think about working really hard for something to happen. But when the end result is this and, and a passing of the person, it's even, you know, magnified yeah. because the loss is irreparable and you know how very hard you forked. Yeah, and, it's um, very hard and it's not fair. And it's very difficult and I really pray for you guys. I mean, it, it's very difficult to even um, fathom. I can't fathom what you're going through because I haven't lived it. And it's just 
I hope uh, that more people, you know, will support you guys and, you know, that we did put the information, you know, to be able to help for those people that want to help and, you know, the, the viewing audience, the people that are still going to be, um, you know, doing something to help out in, in any which way, because four years of, of the, this type of financial uh, burden is, is very great as well. Yeah, it it took a lot from us. Thankfully, we have a great family support system that helped us through it all. Um, watching the other kids so we could work and not work because there would be times in months and years that I didn't work. There was only one income at one point that we had to depend on. So mm -hmm. it was really tight at some points for us. Yeah. And so I really truly hope that in our country at some point that, that all of this uh, condition that we have to endure because it's twofold in the sense that we're dealing not only with the financial aspect of it, but the emotional draining piece of it, which drains you on, you know, on every end is the best way to say it. And how do you come back from this is the main thing now for you guys, you know, to be able to come back and stand back up and say, okay, we got this, you know, we're gonna survive everything that we've been through. Just taking it day by day, Just taking it day by day. That's right. That's right. And and it, I, I really have to give you guys kudos, you know, for just being as courageous and as brave and, and, you know, just being stoic through the whole entire, you know, ordeal because it is huge. It is a lot, you know, it's things that, you know, people a lot of times don't get through. They don't make it. They don't survive. But it's also one of these stories that are so important that we share because when we share this real life, uh, you know, how human life is so fragile and how we really need each other in our lives, you know, so, so much. But yet a lot of things get, you know, overlooked. Definitely. probably you know things get overlooked like, what would you say is the major thing that got overlooked um we didn't know as much about childhood cancer before right. our daughter was diagnosed because it was never like promoted you see the saint jude commercials but never really understood nobody really talked about it as much as oh october is breast uh, cancer awareness month okay. right but then once so we got up hit with our daughter diagnosed we found out september was childhood cancer awareness you don't see those don't at stores you don't see people talk about that for that month or you know promote it as much as they do for october wear pink where you know for breast mm -hmm. cancer awareness when children as well is a big population of this world practically yeah right and we have you know we have globally hospitals all over the world that have sick children in them but like you said and just pointed out we don't have the same kind of marketing is the best way to say it we don't have the same level of marketing for for children the way we have for you know like you said breast cancer or even other you know illnesses you know mm -hmm. that that are very nowadays getting much more attention than they had in the past but we do need to bring awareness and, and it's one of the things that you're doing now through your daughter is you're bringing this awareness to families and they're going to have a whole perspective now, a whole different view of what it's like to be the, you know, the parents of a child that passed away from cancer. Unfortunately, it's not what we expected, but it's something that we're gonna have to live with day by day just missing her and i hope we are able to continue to tell her story as the beautiful soul that she was as mm -hmm. the smiley person sassy little girl she'll tell you if she don't like you like she'll tell you what she liked and what she didn't like especially to the nurses um she definitely will let you know she will speak her mind yeah it's amazing what learning and what growing and how painful growth is for us as humans. Yeah, I just she had to grow like right? 
pretty quick for her age to get through everything she had to get through these past four years. And it robbed her of her childhood practically that she couldn't enjoy. And we tried our best to give her everything. When she fell right? Yeah. She wasn't falling down. She loved the beach though. She definitely loved the beach. And that's the picture that you that we had, even for the flyer, you know, where she's at the beach, which was the one thing that she loved so much. Again, our, the video is freezing. I will um, be closing soon for those of you watching and those that are um, staying with us through this uh, technical difficulty that we're experiencing. And I want to say thank you for all our our viewers and our audience that are with us at this time. Thank you so much, guys, for everything. Um, I know you guys are going through a tough time right now just with me. (laughs) Having to talk about all this pain and all this suffering that has been endured. It looks like the video is freezing. I will be closing in, in another minute here as soon as we get back. Okay, guys, thank you so much. It froze again. No I'm going to go into closing. What can you guys provide us in closing? for the program. Um, well, thank you for having us. Thank oh, you you're for most allowing welcome. us to tell, tell her story. story. Yes. Basically her story. Um, her birthday is coming up, which is going to be very hard for us because this is her first, first birthday. Not even within a month of her passing. Her birthday right. will be on the 15th. So we're just going to try and take that day and celebrate her life as she would want us to. Exactly. Dad, what would you like to say in closing? Uh, same as well. Thank you for anybody that's listening. I uh, would call it about a story and everything. Uh, stay strong. Uh, where whoever's going through anything, just keep out, keep, reach out, and everything. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Stay strong with your family. Be blessed, and uh, yeah, that's it. And no pride, right? No pride at all. Just, no. just be human. Have, just no pride for when you it's go through okay. stuff like this. It took him three years to finally ask for help. He finally asked for help the last year because he was so into his pride, especially being a Hispanic male, not wanting to ask for help. And, you know, the doctor was like, you know, you need help. Just ask us. And he would still stand up and cry and be like, thank you and walk out the room. And right. then he finally did take it. And I was happy that he finally started his counseling as he needs because everybody needs help we all need this. help and it's okay to get the help and it's okay to get the counseling and it's okay to see whatever professional it takes to get us through life you yes. know it's the yes. main message i think here tonight yes, yes. is that we talk about how important it is and think of how proud you can be now eloy for overcoming it yes it took me a while like how she said so <laughs> But overall, you know what I'm saying? I, it was, yeah, I was being selfish to myself instead of actually people helping, and not just me, but also my family. And they're getting help. Exactly, exactly. But it's it was learning. I really want to uh, say thank you to everybody for your patience today and uh, how difficult it's been to get through this process with the uh, connection uh, tonight. It's been quite the challenge. <laughs> I was just apologizing to our public for the uh, challenges with yes, the uh, technology today <laughs> and the Wi-Fi connection. But thank you so much, both of you, for being here uh, today and for sharing your story and you know just shedding light on the very uh, 
subjects that we touched on today and, and, and the points that were made. Thank you so very much to both of you for being with us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I really appreciate it to both of you. Right. And I just pray to God that you guys have healing and that uh, someday will come where you guys don't have to be in such a heavy hearted place right. where, you know, things will get better for both of you and your family. Thank both you. of your I families you. more than anything right. so may god give you strength to endure and with this i'm going to say good night to everybody that's been with us tonight and thank you very much and thank we you. will uh be all praying for you thank, thank you well everybody have a good night and we want to say thank you for all the people that were so patient tonight and uh getting with uh getting through all of this with us as we went through the the difficulty with the connection thank you so much everyone and we are broadcasting from Radio Dimension Latina FM download the application so you can have uh, all these programs uh, anytime we have um, a program uh, thank you for watching uh, uh, wings of love alas de amor in spanish and thank you very much to both of you griselda and aloy Thank you very much. Good night, everybody.